It will be back to business at Queen's Park for MPPs starting tomorrow. The legislature is set to resume after a 19-week-long summer break. For a preview, let's go live to CP24's Andrew Brennan outside of the Queen's Park for us today. And one reason why this is so much in the spotlight, Andrew, is that there's plenty of speculation that we could be seeing an early election in our province. That's uh, the odds on bet right now, Melissa. And that's part of the reason why we've been hearing, at least when you hear from political commentators like our Scott Reed and otherwise, you know, they say a lot of the reasons why we're getting, we have gotten so many promises. Uh, that are more political versus policy over the span of this of the summer as we're heading into the fall session is because of that expectation for what's coming in 2025 that vote and trying to entice the electorate now with promises and some of them are very big and some of them are you know seemingly almost pie in the sky like talking about getting a tunnel under the 401 that's one of the things we've heard in the last couple of weeks but others are can be actually a very very local and I won't don't you want to use the word small but very focused uh, ramifications let's think about one right now we talk about the the debate around bike lanes well there's been a redesign in the works at Parkside Drive for years now after the Aviva family were uh, tragically killed there that was a few years ago now and Thinking about where we're at right now and what could be in jeopardy with the promise of that just singular piece of legislation, let's bring in Faraz Golazadeh. He's the co-chair of Parks of Safe Parkside, and that group has been looking and trying to get this redesign, at least parts of it, in the works for a long time now. Faraz, I even remember us talking two years ago on Parkside in front of the speed camera there and what the next phase was supposed to be. So I bring all of this up trying to maybe think from you the ramifications of some of these promises from a provincial government what do you think could be in jeopardy not just in your community well the ramifications are pretty widespread um, bike lanes aren't just for the safety of cyclists they are there for the safety of pedestrians they're there for the safety of motorists uh, many of the people that die on Toronto's roads are actually motorists believe it or not and you have to remember that safety is much more important than driver convenience. When you weigh a minute or two of travel time compared to someone's life, someone's mother, someone's father, someone's brother, sister, someone's child, it's hard to even fathom weighing that against saving a minute or two in your commute. So it's quite unfortunate this direction that the province seems to be headed. And in terms of the, um, the, the debate, for lack of a better way to put it, on who should have jurisdiction on something this local, uh, you know, the City Hall, whether it's the mayor or some of the councillors we've heard from, they talk about this being an obvious municipal issue, but then there is a Conservative government in power at the provincial level, and that government is in saying that it wants to impose uh, more, it's not red tape, but for lack of a better way to put it, we'll call it that. So do you think right now that this is something that the Ford government is trying to use for political purposes versus asking people in your neighborhood what you want? Uh, absolutely, it does feel that way very much because the people of Toronto have voted for their councillors, they voted for their mayor. We have our own elected officials who are making decisions that we've asked them to make and you know the premier to, to step into municipal matters isn't something that should be accepted because you know he's the premier of ontario he's not the mayor of toronto when you think about what the mayor our mayor the mayor of toronto being olivia chow uh, she does have a, a, you know, a very good working relationship with the Premier. Uh, they are old friends. Uh, you know, Jack Layton was a mentor to Doug Ford when he, and, and Rob Ford, let's not forget about that too, when they were, uh, city when they were on City Council. Uh, so do you think that having that relationship potentially could mean that projects like Parkside could be saved? I certainly hope so, because, it, like I said, it goes well beyond just Parkside. These, these bike lanes are saving lives all across Toronto. 
Um, our Vision Zero data is showing that deaths are very slowly, but they are going down. And that's what we're trying to aim for. We're trying to get to zero road deaths and removing bike lanes is just gonna take us back to what it was before, which is you know close to double what we're experiencing right now. So that's a huge setback. That's a lot of lives that are lost. That's a lot of people that don't make it home at all to their families. And to be concerned about one or two extra minutes on a commute when you talk about people not making it home at all, it's, you know, it's quite frankly unacceptable. Faraz, we're going to leave it there. We do appreciate your time as always. Faraz Golazade is the co-chair of, Park, of Safe Parkside. And uh, we do, as always, appreciate hearing from you. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you very much.